Hello, welcome to Fire Engineering Training Minutes. I'm Jason DeFossi from Ontario, Canada, and my partner Dale Zarman from Columbus, Ohio. We're going to be talking about dash relocations and dash displacements, specific to electric and hybrid vehicles. Dale? There's some really important considerations about design and location of high voltage components that we need to understand before we tackle these dash problems. Let's start with design. The front firewall has now changed terms and in most industry sectors they're now calling it a bulkhead. So the bulkhead has changed angles. It's no longer a flat or perpendicular segment on the car. It now has a high strength reinforced area behind the wheel well that runs at an angle and has some curvature to it before it approaches the opposing A-pillar. This creates a big challenge when we're trying to get that bulkhead to bend or shear. So our old methods of a single tool placement for a rolling movement or a single spreader for a lifting movement do not generate enough force to fracture, shear, or tear the bulkhead. Jason's going to cover technique changes where we create more penetration and more release in the bulkhead to get that to break free. The second important consideration is the location of these charging components, just like we talked about in the door removal segment. If you have high voltage cabling running through any of your pillars, you're going to avoid any techniques that would cut these pillars or move these pillars. That means that we're going to be focusing on blind or no cut relief techniques where we're using internal contact points to locate the transverse beams or the structural components inside of a dash and break those free from the A-pillar to get the dash to rise up through the vehicle. Jason, go ahead and talk about how we're going to apply some of those concepts. Absolutely. Once we've gained access, like the past module where we talked about door removal and access. First thing is, obviously through proper shoring operations, we're going to implement, in this example, a ram. We were going to preload those rams in the direction away from the patient so when we start to make those relief cuts none of that energy transfers back to the patient. It's important to understand new cars no longer cut, they fracture and break and it is violent so we need to be prepared for those reactions of this metal and that is delivered through the preload. Next once we've accomplished those things we will then in a time tandem tool evolution move and relocate this dash away from our patient. That's what we're going to do and we're going to demonstrate that next. In this sequence, we're going to illustrate a more traditional dash displacement, but we're going to use two tools so that we have enough force, power, and control to maneuver these ultra high strength resistances in the directions we want them to go. We're going to initiate this by displacing the fender skin. No notice we still have an illustrative model on the fender skin indicating a charge port. In this scenario, uh, that would not be the, the, the case. We'd have to omit that. So uh, disregard the high voltage indicator on this fender skin. We're going to skin that fender out. We're going to work through our segmenting of the A-pillar and A-post, and then we're going to preload with our rams and use a combination of ram and spreader to roll and lift the dash and displace it from the zone. So again, we're disregarding the high voltage charge port panel indicator. Kirby is skinning out the fender skin. You notice his bottom bolts have already displaced. And as all we're doing is exposing that lower portion of the A-pillar so that we can identify all our strategic benchmarks to make the proper cuts. Kirby's folded that out of the way well. We're making a high A-post cut now. As soon as the upper A-post cut is completed, the ram is going to come in because this is a long reach from what's remaining of the B-pillar weld seam. We're going to use two rescuers to position that properly. Make sure you have two points in, two points out, and go for the neck of the upper A. Watch your tool placements on this angle push and make sure that you are perpendicular to your materials. The move is driven by the ram and chased by the spreader once the cut is complete. So we preloaded the energy of this making one complete cut through the lower A-pillar. And then the ram will initiate and create gapping so that the spreader can come in properly and continue that movement. You'll notice as soon as the cut is complete, the ram can start creating good movement for the victim right away. On real EVs with ultra high strength resistance, you may need the spreader right out of the bat to help initiate that shearing and movement of the bulkhead as well as the upper A. And stop, and we're now gonna pause. The ram is going to remove itself from the equation and the spreader is gonna capture the load. Good, stop, stop. 
and we have all the spread and expansion we need. Well controlled, well managed, and notice that the spreader relocated to the wheel well side so that the arc of the spread mimicked the axis and the energy of the push that the ram is creating. That's gonna double down the force you can create with your tools. Next, we're gonna do an alternative dash relocation exercise. On this particular example, we have a charger port here, which is gonna create challenges for us to use our rescue tools to do traditional relief cut sequencing. In the time where a dash is compressed upon our patient, time is of the essence. What we have found is using the structural strong points of our vehicle to our advantage in a no relief dash relocation. Rescuer Wilson is gonna come in and demonstrate that action by taking his spreader, placing in the curvature of the lower A, where it is structurally strong, not going inwards towards the high voltage battery pack and driving the dash vertically up and off of our patient. As you can see, the patient is covered as well as hard protection. Kirby? So now the rescuer is now displacing the dash, coming under and capturing underneath the bulkhead and or dash beam in a dash relocation. Excellent. At this point here, the rescuer, we can then move forward with patient packaging and removal. Thus, space created in seconds. In summary, we've discussed and demonstrated two different dash displacement approaches one involving no relief actions and the other one revolving around more traditional movements with both tools overpowering the joints. Remember to slow down, take your time, evaluate where your high voltage components are and look at the vehicle design within the bulkhead and the wheel well assembly to make the best decision for the right approach. Jason, what are your takeaway points for the more no relief based application? So in this application, we chose the no relief. And the reason for that was we had a body structure that was sound that we could actually use and push and manipulate to our advantage. Secondly was the charge port location. This would interfere with our traditional cutting operations. So therefore, based on time and patient condition, we located structural strong points, pushing and focusing off the rocker rail, locating the dash beam and bulkhead and driving all that material up and off of our patient and executing it very well. Thanks for watching Fire Engineering's Training Minutes.